what's up guys so I just wanted to come on here really quickly before um, my son wake up to express my labor and delivery story so here we go okay so on mm, no uh, on May 1st I had started feeling contractions at this point I was 30 uh, I was 31 weeks I was 31 weeks on May 1st and I had started feeling these pains and at first I didn't know um, like what they was because it's my first pregnancy and um, I'm just like maybe I was just doing too much and I need to just sit down and just get my life together because I was hurting really bad and so that night I was like let me let me see if I can time every time this pain will come. So I was timing them, and they were coming every 10 to 12 minutes. Every 10 to 12 minutes, I would get this pain, but it would only last for like 10 seconds. So I didn't think nothing of it. And um, so the day I was leaving, I was in. I flew to Michigan for my baby shower with my um, family because I live here in Tennessee. So I flew, I was flying back to Nashville and my flight, it, it was an hour and 15 minutes. So um, I got back home and I was just like, I'm just going to lay down and get myself together because maybe because I was out of my element and just the fly and traveling, that's what was making me hurt. So I go home, went to bed and I was still having these pains every 10 to 12 minutes. And so 6 o'clock that morning, I had got up and I was just like, I need to go to the emergency to check on my baby because I didn't know what was going on. Remind you, this is my first baby and I didn't know what, what to do. So I go to the emergency at 6 o'clock in the morning and the lady... Um, I get checked in, get your little wristband or whatever, and when they let them know that I was pregnant, of course they send the maternity floor down and come get me. So I get sent to the maternity floor, and at this point, my doctor was there. So my doctor actually came in, and she seen me, and she checked my cervix and stuff, and come to find out, I was dilated to two. At 31 weeks, I was dilated to two centimeters. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, two centimeters? So she was like, um, that's not that bad, but we just want to make sure. We just want to stop the contractions so you won't keep dilating. And we're going to give you these steroid shots to help develop his lungs if you do have to come early. So she was just telling me that, you know, I can be dilated at two for like a long time until like I'm like completely full term and I was like okay that's not bad so she was like we're just gonna keep you overnight for observations so I'm there all day I'm doing good you know my families and friends that come up and see me and check on me and um so that night when everybody's transitioning to go into the night routine so my night nurse she come in and she checked my cervix and I had dilated to three. So uh again it was like once they found out that I dilated to three and she was like, Well we can fill your water bag and so all these nurses come rushing in and they giving me another round of steroid shots and my hips and stuff and also trying to give me more of the medicine to stop my um contractions from coming and um at this point they end up elevating the bed so say the bed is like this and this part is my feet i was like this in the bed so i was this is my feet and this part is my head so i'm like this in the bed um just because they didn't want any pressure down there on my water bag so it wouldn't break so I'm sleep like this really is uncomfortable. So that night was just horrible.
That was the first night at the hospital. It was horrible. Then you can't really sleep because that was my first time actually ever being admitted to the hospital and actually have to stay overnight. So it was really horrible. And, um, you know, the nurses coming in and out, coming to check on you, making sure. And then you got all these monitors hooked up to your belly. At this time, I had a catheter, so I couldn't get up and go to the restroom. And they had those pressure things on my legs. So, you know, they're putting pressure on my legs. So it was just uncomfortable. Like, I didn't even go to sleep that night. So that morning, um, they come back in, and um, my doctor, she comes in, and she was like, okay, we're going to get you down, and we're going to check you. We're going to check your cervix and see how you're doing. So I was still dilated at three. So they was just like, okay, you're doing good. You're still dilated at three. You haven't dilated anymore. And so we can get you down and get you in the shower and stuff like this. So... You know, they sitting there, you know, just having a conversation or whatever. As soon as my doctor stepped away from my bed, my water broke. And I was just like, I just felt this gush. And I know, okay, so I got interrupted. I didn't even know in the story where I was at. So my water breaks. And, um, of course, you know, once your water breaks, that means that it's time to have a baby. There's no more barrier in there to protect him and keep him in there. So, we're going to have a baby. And at this point, I had reached 32 weeks. So, I was 32 weeks exactly on that Friday on May 6th. So, my water breaks. They get the Pitocin going to get my contractions going so I can dilate faster. So, I say within an hour and 30 minutes, I had dilated to six. I was doing really good with, um, you know, taking the contractions I want to say they didn't hurt that bad, but the reason why I said mine didn't hurt that bad because everybody's story is different. Everybody's. Mine didn't hurt that bad because they were happening so fast, but they they wasn't coming back to back. Like I would have a relief in between the contractions. So um, once I got dilated to six, they asked me, did I want the epidural and stuff like that? So I talked it over. And I was just like, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. Since I'm already at six and I got to six within an hour. So I'm like, I'm going to get to 10 really fast. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do the epidural. So I get my epidural done. And um, that was a weird feeling like ever in life. So um, after that, maybe 45 minutes go past. They come back and check my cervix. I was still at six. I basically was at a plateau once I got my epidural done. And then um, I had to end up switching doctors because my primary doctor, she ended up uh, having to go on a call with another patient. So she sent in her partner and she comes in and, you know, she's getting caught up on everything. And she's looking at my charts of... You know, every time I have a contraction, they were saying that his heart rate wasn't coming back up. And she was like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. I don't like this. So, um, short story, end up having to get an emergency C-section. And I had my son at 322 um, p.m. And he weighed 3 pounds, 11 ounces. And when he came out, like, it was like this little squeal. It was like, mm. Like you, like he didn't have a for real cry, and she held him up, and it was like here he goes, mom. And I went and looked, like it was like this, like it was like that fast, and they whipped him away because you know he's a preemie, so they're trying to make sure he's breathing right, everything is developed, blah blah blah. So um, I get back to recovery into my room, and I was so drugged up that I couldn't even go see my son. I didn't go, I didn't see him until the next day, until the next morning. So, um, went to go see him the next morning. They got him all hooked up in the incubator. If you ever know what a NICU baby looks like, that's what he looked like with all the machines and stuff like that. So, um, I'm just going to short story. He ended up staying in the NICU for seven weeks. He was in there for seven weeks. And 
I took him home. Our first night was rough. Now, I actually had to spend a night in the hospital the night before he got sent home because they were trying to make sure I was able to take care of him and his needs of, you know, all it needs to be done. Basically, he went home healthy. Like, we didn't go home with no machines, no directions with all this medicine. No, he went home healthy and everything because our last couple of weeks, we were just waiting for him for his brain to click and say that he needs to eat so and to drink his bottle. So, uh, now my son, he'll be three months on August 6th, and um, I'm just happy that he's here, he's healthy, and I just love him so much. He's such a blessing into my life, even though he was unexpected, and he's just a joy. He laughs, he giggles, he smiles, and I just love him, and I just thank God for blessing me with him and putting him in my life and trusting that I will raise him to my best abilities. So I'm going to input some videos at the end of this video of my journey of uh, what I went through with the time that he was in the hospital. It's just a couple pictures that I have on my phone that I'm just going to insert. So um, thank you guys for watching my video and just listening to my story. Thumbs up the video. Please subscribe because there's going to be more videos of, you know, just my journey of me being a new mommy. And I'm going to do a three-month update once we go to the doctor next week on little Cameron. So, thank you guys for watching. Bye. Sing you stand.